Hey, Alexis. So excited to talk to you today. When did you first realize you liked singing? Ooh, that's a good one. When did I first realize I liked singing? It's hard because like, I don't know. I don't have one of those moments like where I was like, okay, guys, like I'm going to become a singer. Like (laughs) I feel like it was just always something I did. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like everyone around me and like my parents, they were like, yeah, Kylie's just like always been singing. Like this was just kind of always what she was doing. And it just felt normal to like continue to do it as I got older. Um, and it's cool that I get to like do it, you know, as a profession. But even yeah. if this wasn't something that, you know, even if it wasn't my work, I would still be singing around the house and singing all the time covers whatever um it's just something I always did and I am lucky enough to like have two parents that are also very creative and my dad is a songwriter and producer so it was very much encouraged and he would sit me down and like help me write songs and he would record me in the studio when I was like five years old I think I like recorded my first original when I was like five or something um so definitely like a non-traditional childhood in that sense but yeah I'm very lucky That's amazing. So when did you first find out you were going to be on High School Musical, the musical, the series? And what was your reaction to that? I first found out I was going to be on High School Musical. Well, it was cool because I sent in a tape and I I got the sides for Danny and I was like, oh my God, this character is so fun. Like I've always wanted to play a mean girl character similar to Sharpay. Um, So it was really fun getting to kind of channel that I used like Sharpay as a reference, Regina George a little bit, Um, even like Maddie Perez from Euphoria. Like those were the characters that I really wanted to emulate Danny after. And I sent in my tape and literally, I kid you not, like two days later, um, I got an email and it was from Tim Federley. And he was like, "Um, Kylie, let's hop on a Zoom right now. We got on a Zoom. It was just like me, Tim and the casting director. And um And yeah, we just chatted and he was like, I loved your tape. I loved just like the energy you brought to Danny. Like, would you want to do the show? (laughs) And I was like, is that even a question? It was like so casual. He was like, do you want the show? Like, we'd love to have you. And I was like, "Um, yes, absolutely. (laughs) Amazing. What a fun opportunity. So tell me about what it was like the first day on set of High School Musical. And um, what was it like when you found out you were going to sing the iconic High School Musical song as a solo? Just tell me about your entire experience just on set. Oh, my experience was so wonderful. I have nothing but incredible things to say about just the cast, the crew, the environment was so welcoming. And, you know, it is a little nerve wracking coming onto a show, especially since they were on their fourth season. Like they're already such a tight knit family, but they just welcomed me with open arms. And I remember my first day of filming was me and Joshua. Um, It was actually a scene that got cut. (laughs) It's not in the series, but um, me and Joshua had a scene where it was just us like meeting for the first time in the hallway. Sadly, it didn't make the cut, but that was my first day. And um, Joshua was like so cool. And um, I just remember like him singing the whole time. Like even when the cameras weren't rolling, like he was constantly like singing songs and like I would jump in and we would like sing a little bit together and like he would harmonize and (laughs) he was just such a cool such a cool kid and that goes for everyone on on the show it's it's really cool how it's like a musical off screen as well because everyone's constantly like playing instruments there's always a piano on set um people are constantly singing so it is a musical in real life as well so cool and that's fun to hear too as just like a high school musical fan myself like I grew up with high school musical so it's cool to see how that's transition transitioned into the series too and how it is such a tight-knit family um you kind of touched on this but what was it like working with Tim Federley and the entire cast and crew um whenever we speak to any of the cast members they just say how everyone you know Uh, as a family like you just said so what's maybe like a special experience you had with him um, while on set Tim is so wonderful I think the the best thing about I mean I can go on and on about Tim Uh, (laughs) he's first of all just so talented and so so creative such a great leader Um, definitely like just he did an incredible job steering the ship and um, aside from all of that he's just such a caring person and he's so thoughtful and he knows every single person's name on on set like 
the everyone from like the grips to the the cooks the caterers and um costumes like every single person and he like remembers everyone's birthdays and like I just remember like constantly on set he would be like taking breaks of like guys hold on let's all wish like Ralph a happy birthday he's like our lighting like let's all like do a little happy birthday for him um so it was just so sweet that he took the time to really make everyone feel so special and he um he started this like gratitude wall on set and it was so so cute it's like in um like where the glam room was but like everyone would put little post-it notes on the wall just saying like what they're grateful for and um it's just it was so sweet to see like he really created such a beautiful environment and everyone is just so it feels like a team and and it does take a village so it's cool just like having that vibe of like we all got each other's backs and we're here to support one another and that's definitely the culture he created on set that's amazing okay I have to ask were you arena stan (laughs) <laughs> arena sin of course <laughs> end game they're kind of literally end game goals <laughs> okay good to know um all right walk me through your get ready with me before you create your tiktoks Ooh, before i create tiktoks um my get ready with me i'm like pretty chill okay. actually i i take that back i do kind of take a long time to get ready <laughs> Okay. I need to work on that. Right now, it's like two hours to get ready. I don't know why it takes me so long. I think the reason might be because I just like, I love that alone time of getting ready in the morning. And it's kind of like my self-care. I just like vibe out to music. Like I take my time, you know, prepping the face, the hair, whatever. Um, so yeah, it is a bit of a long process. I, I need to probably trim that time down a little bit because two hours is a little excessive for <laughs> my glam every day. Um, and which is funny because I keep it so natural. <laughs> it's kind of sad yeah. that this takes me two hours, but, um, I just love my, my time to myself in the bathroom getting ready. I, I cherish it every day. Yeah, it's almost like a ritual probably to get ready to film. It is a rule for sure. (laughs) Okay, so on your TikToks, you make creating music look so easy. So if there was one tool that could help someone who wants to create music like you do, what would it be and why? Um, I kind of talked about this in my last 10 minute song video that I posted. Um, just a little trick that I've picked up from one of my fellow songwriter friends. Um, start a concept book, just a little journal, a little book that you carry with you where you just write down lines, titles, concepts, ideas, whatever it is. You never know when inspiration's gonna gonna hit. So I always bring it with me. I have a little journal I carry in my purse. And I'll just, anytime I get inspired, something hits me, I'll just write it down. And that has helped me so much when I'm, you know, sitting down going to write a song. And if I'm like stuck for whatever reason, I can always pull out that concept book and look at ideas. And, you know, a lot of the time it's like you forget about ideas that you have so it's good to always have that and to go back and be like oh this is such a cool title like let me work this in I think there's something special about this so definitely definitely that's like my biggest tip carry a concept book and that's such a good idea too because you're always like I'll remember that and then a few days I don't remember that (laughs) yeah and like voice memo is like my savior because if I ever have a melody or something I'm humming like you always forget it so (laughs) it doesn't matter how incredible the idea is like Just voice memo it because you're going to (laughs) forget. I love it. Okay. A couple more questions. Um, What has been your favorite fan experience? Hmm. My favorite fan experience. I actually had a fun fan experience yesterday. Um, It's like top of my mind, but I taught a dance class yesterday with my choreographer, Mary, to my song, put the record on that just came out. We did like a little dance class pop up at Millennium Dance Complex in LA. Um, But I, after the class, I was like, you know, taking pictures and um, just like shaking hands with a couple people um, who took the class and the, this group of girls they were like we skipped school to come here and take your class like our teachers are going to be so mad it was like <laughs> worth it this is terrible I'm a terrible influence you can't be out here skipping class I can't get you expelled for a dance class but oh, that's goodness. real commitment and I'm just like honored. <laughs> I love that. That's great. Okay. So we know you're going to be playing Red, the Queen of Hearts daughter in the new Descendants film. Um, the Queen of Hearts is being played by Rita Ora. What was it like working together? Did she give you any acting or singing tips that you plan to take with you along your career? I love Rita. She's so fun. She is a queen on screen, off screen, 
of course she's like a super sweet queen which <laughs> in the movie she's definitely a little more um cold which she's she's not like that at all in real life she's very sweet very bubbly um and it's funny we actually didn't talk much about like I see her more as a big sister funny enough like she's just like we would talk about like more regular life stuff like we would talk about boys and like friends and she would give me more like just life advice honestly um rather than like yeah just like career stuff like I, I had so much fun just talking to her about like life and relationship advice she gives great relationship advice so it was cool having her to like talk to in between takes <laughs> she's yeah. great oh that's so sweet okay besides for um descendants the rise of red what else uh should kylie Kentrell fans be looking forward to so much music i have an ep that's going to be dropping in the summer in june and a single um it's called elastic and it, i've been teasing this song for like the last four months everyone's like where is this song girl like when is it coming out so it's finally coming out along with a music video which i'm so excited about mm. and yeah just so much music and the 10 minute song ep volume two that i'm currently working on i just released volume one um during christmas but yeah i'm excited for that so it's gonna be a music year for sure <laughs> Love it. Awesome. 2024, the year of the songs. I love it. I'm Kylie Cantrell, and make sure you guys subscribe to Young Entertainment.